Hello everyone, my name is Louisa and I am a content creator here at Lightmap. But I tend to wear many hats and work on a variety of different things as we are a small company. My main role involves making content for new product releases like marketing videos, adverts, training content and documentation. I even help out with testing and customer support when needed. No day is the same and that is awesome. With the new HDR Live Studio Blender connection being released very soon, I wanted to introduce you guys to Lexi Lodge, the main developer for this Blender add-on. I interviewed Lexi right after most of the Lightmap team has already started working from home due to coronavirus, with Lexi being one of the last people to still work in the office. In our chat, we talked about her journey to becoming a software developer, her reasons for joining the Lightmap team, and her experiences developing the Blender add-on. I learned a lot about Lexi and it's my pleasure to be sharing this behind the scenes view into life map with you. So without further ado, here's the interview. I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Louisa from Lightmap and I'm here today with Lexi Lodge, our software developer at Lightmap. Hey Lexi, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very good, thank you. So the circumstances are a bit different. We're having to do this interview online. So you've been working at Lightmap for quite a while now. Um, tell me how long exactly? Um, so since November. So it's actually only like four months, four, coming up to five months. Feels a lot longer, time yeah. flies. I can't yeah. really imagine not being here anymore. I know, me too. Feels like you've been here with us like forever. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about your role. So what do you do at Lightmap? Um, so I'm a software developer. So what I've been doing since I've started is... Um, writing a connection for Blender. But yeah, like sort of day to day, I'm just coding and yeah, it's good. And um, so what were you doing before joining Light Lightmap? So you were at the university, right? So this is your first graduate job? Yeah, this is my first proper job after uni. I um, did a physics degree at University of Bristol for four years. It was an undergrad master's degree. And then after, straight after that, I actually worked at the university as a researcher um, last summer, which was really good. I did some work using neural networks, which is kind of good preparation for going into a coding job. But yeah, so I moved back home at September last year. And then this was the first job that I got. I'm sure you had lots of jobs lined up for you you know, because you're really bright and clever. I know that myself, we all know this at the office. So why <laughs> did you. you choose to work at Lightmap? So why did you choose, you know, to join our team? Um, so I thought it seemed like a really friendly, nice office, which was something quite important to me. Um, also, I quite liked that um, joining a bit of a smaller company, it's quite, even though it's our product is quite big and quite successful. It's quite a small team, but that means that I get to work on a lot of big projects, which is really nice. Whereas in a lot of bigger companies, I might have ended up just being a much smaller part of things and not doing as much of my own work. So I've been lucky in that I've been given quite a lot of free reign. And also I quite like, um, I don't have very much experience in the kind of work that Lightmap do. But I thought it sounded really interesting. I thought all of the clients that um, use HDR Light Studio sounded really interesting. And I also liked that because it's lighting, a lot of how it's coded is based on physics. So I get to use my degree a bit as well, which is nice. Have you done any coding before? So um, I, in my degree, we started doing coding from my second year and it was all in Python and we were doing, it was all scientific coding, so it was focused mostly on trying to solve physics problems using algorithms and stuff. And then also in the project I did with Bristol University last summer, I was doing um, implementing a neural network, so that was also in Python. So, I, yeah, I had quite a, so after, I'd had sort of two, three years coding experience and had sort of done a bit of self-taught on the side, but I'd never done anything with APIs or making apps or games or anything like that. It had all been very sort of scientific focused. Do you have any experience with 3D software? Like, have you maybe used any 3D software before joining Lightmap? <laughs> no, not no. at all. Literally none. Yeah. What was your experience like getting into the whole breaking into the 3D software 
Um, were you aware of how the 3D software works by any chance? Did you like hear about different kinds of software like Cinema 4D, Maya? Did you, were you aware of them? Um, so I wasn't actually really aware of pretty much any of the connections we do. <laughs> um, I'd heard of Autodesk because um, new yeah. people who'd used um, some of their different software for like engineering and stuff and for architect things, but I'd never done any myself. Yeah, because I knew people who'd use CAD and that kind of modeling, but I'd never done anything myself. And yeah, basically, I'd never heard of anything really. It's a completely <laughs> new field to me, but exciting. Yeah. Do you like it? Do you, do you find that whole aspect of, you know, modeling, lighting um, quite interesting? Did you find it, it's a lot harder to get into than you thought it would be at the beginning? Um, sort of yes and no. Like I found, I've definitely found it interesting. Um, yeah. I think I found it fair, because it wasn't what I'd used to. I found um, the software quite confusing to start with, and especially because when I first started, I was having a look at Maya, and I find Maya quite hard to use personally <laughs> as someone who hasn't done anything. <laughs> but then moving on to Blender, I actually found as someone who doesn't know anything about three D. Blender was quite an easy um, program to use. So that's quite good that that's kind of the main thing I've been working on. But yeah, yeah each, I think the more experience I get, the easier I'll find them. But then they are all different as well. So speaking of Blender, yes. tell us all about what you've been working on since joining Lightmap. Yeah, so right from the start of joining Lightmap, I was basically put in charge of developing a new connection for HDR Light Studio for Blender, which is really exciting and also really exciting to be able to be given that kind of job as a new starter in a company, like as a new grad who's never done anything like that before. And yeah, it's been, it's been really good. So we've got the plugin pretty much developed now. Um, and that's, that's been my main project for the whole time I've been here. Since like starting to develop the connection for Blender, what kind of challenges were you faced with? What were the biggest like troubles or concerns? Were you ever worried that you might not get the Blender connection finished? Um, so I think I've always thought that we'd definitely get the connection finished because I knew that I had people in our team who'd be able to support me as well, you know, because it is my first connection and because I was new at the start, I've had a lot of support, which has been nice. And also because HDR Light Studio has so many connections for other things, I've been able to sort of draw some of that code and adapt it as well. Um, especially, for example, Maya is also, so Blender connection is written in Python. Bl um, Maya is also written in Python. So I was able to kind of draw some parallels with that. Um, yeah. I think in terms of challenges, well, I mean, for the start, just learning, because as I said, I'd never done any 3D work before, like getting my head around what was required in a connection and also like how a piece of 3D software works was one of the first challenges. And then also I was new to HDR Light Studio as well. So mm. sort of conceptually, it was a bit hard at the start, but um, in terms of code, I mean, Blender, I'm sure as a lot of people watching this will know, has its own API because they pretty much actively encourage people to try and um, develop like small add-ons onto their software which is a nice thing and in I mean it's very well documented and is good but there are some sort of tricky things to kind of conceptually get your head around um, I'm sure anyone who's tried to code something for Blender will know that context access can be a bit of a issue and something that is sometimes hard to get your head around so there have been a few things for, yeah, so it's been like two kind of, not problems, but things that have been difficult for me to get my head around. One is just, yeah, the 3D software itself, and then two, learning a new, like the Blender API and sort of getting to grips with what you can and can't do with it. And what kind of resources were you using? So I'm speaking in terms of like the coding aspect of the challenges. What kind of resources were you using or which ones were the, the most useful? So, I mean... Anyone who's done any development will have used Stack Overflow a lot. And um, <laughs> the Blender play, the ben, Blender forum of Stack Overflow is amazing and has saved me. Blender Stack Exchange. 
Um, and then that's probably been, to be honest, my top resource in terms of if I've had problems. I mean, for just straight development, the Blender API and the Blender documentation is always a good point of call. But sometimes when you want some, you want examples and stuff, it's just nice to go on forums where people can show you. I've also been on other Blender forums like Blender Nation, stuff like that. Um, Blender has a really, really good community, which is something I really like about it. I think coming in as someone who doesn't know much about 3D software, mm. I found the Blender community has kind of helped me understand more because there's just so much online that people post. Um, it's really active, which means that if you post a question to something, there are people who will answer and it's just really nice. I've also looked at the developer blogs for Blender and um, Blender's open source, so and anyone can help develop for it. And um, if we've found bugs or what we think are bugs in the software, it's been nice that you can report those direct to Blender. People come and start trying to solve it straight away. So yeah, basically the Blender community has been what's helped me. But yeah, Blender Stack Exchange is probably my top resource. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you had to choose like one thing that was like the hardest part about the whole process, what would it be? I mean, for the thing that has been the hardest to implement in Blender has been our use of area lights. So anyone who uses our software will be familiar with our area lights. And in our Blender connection, we've actually done it a bit differently to what we do in other connections. And because Blender has inbuilt into it both Cycles and EV as renderers, we've um, had to adapt to use both um, to make things compatible with both. We've also played around a bit using um, two different types of area lights. So we use both mesh emitters, um, so area lights that we make from mesh planes and then put textures onto them. And then also we, we also do use the Blender default area light objects in our software, but um, trying to make sure that all our textures appear completely right has been probably the, probably the biggest challenge and is the thing that I've probably spent the longest on because especially with Blender updating all the time, we've had, we'll think we've got something perfect and then we'll find that there's an API change or something. And then also, um, you know, textures will work for one type of area light in one renderer, but then it's trying to get sort of compatibility, as much compatibility across everything as we can has been hardest because we want it to be, we want to give users the biggest choice that we can in how they want to use area lights. Um, so it's just been trying to put ourselves in their shoes and make sure that anything that we think people would want to do with area lights, they can do. But yeah, that's probably been the biggest challenge so far. I know that you said that the Blender connection is pretty much finished. Yeah. Is there much, is there anything that's left to do or is it really just polishing it? So in terms of, um, yeah, so we have all of the functionality that we would want for a first release. We're in testing at the moment, which is really exciting, especially for me, because I mean, a bit nerve wracking as well, because my software is being tested. You must feel really proud when it goes live. Oh, I'm going to be so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> um, did you have any preconceptions of Blender at the start and have they changed? Um, no, I mean, not really, because as I said before, I didn't know much about 3D software. But I mean, from when I first started, I, I guess I have found what I found out about it has made me really like it, to be honest. I think at the start, partly because I didn't know 3D software and also because I think anything takes a while to get used to at the start. I found some of it quite hard to use. I didn't like some of their stuff in their Python API and, you know, found some of it a bit hard um, at the start. But now I know it a lot better. Um, I mean, obviously there are limitations there are to everything, but I do think it is a really good piece of software. I think having seen their older versions, I think the 2.8 series is looks really good. I think, I mean, just from a aesthetic point of view, I think it's a nice looking piece of software. It seems to have a lot of good capability. And I think the fact that it's open source, it's free, um, 
you know, it's got this amazing community. I think that's really nice. And I think that's not what I think, even though I didn't know about 3D software, I kind of thought of it as being quite sort of corporate and co cold almost. I think some of the big pieces of software, they're owned by these big kind of faceless organizations. And like, obviously they're really good. Um, but I think what's nice about Blender is it's got this community feel to it. And it's quite, it, I think the community is a really big part of it. And I think it's really good soft. I mean, I now love Blender. <laughs> I think yeah. it's really good, yeah. How do you feel about the performance of the connection? Um, so I've mostly, the only other one I've really looked at is Maya. Um, we have the Blender connection in the first release um, doesn't have all of the functionality that connect, the Maya connection does. Um, I mean, we're hoping to add some of it in later and then some we're not sure if it will be able to add it in, but then the Blender one does have different stuff as well. Um, I mean, I think I would like to say that it's pretty much on par in what we've got. And <laughs> I think it's, it's a good connection. I think hopefully our users who use Blender will find it a really useful tool for lighting in Blender. You must be really excited about getting this Blender connection out to the, um, the hands of Blender artists. How do you think they will behave when they find out it's out finally? Well, I really hope that um, people will be excited about it. I talked to, we went to Vertex event in London a few weeks back and a lot of the people I talked to there used Blender and were quite excited about the thought of having an HDR light studio connection for Blender. So hopefully, and that's only obviously a small amount of people that use our software. So I'm really hoping that a lot of people will be excited about it. And then also, I'm really hoping as well that through this connection, we might get uh, some new customers as well, because I think the Blender community is maybe a different I mean, I think there's a lot of overlap, but I also think there are a lot of people in the Blender community who potentially haven't heard of our software before or don't use some of the other three or prefer Blender to some of the other 3D softwares that we support. So it'd be really good to get them using HDR Light Studio because I think it is a really, really good tool. And so many people I know find lighting hard and I do think that this does make it easier. And yeah, I think it, it could attract a lot of different customers, which is really exciting. Definitely. Um, as you have said before, you have a master's degree in physics. How did that help you prepare for coding this connection to Blender? Um, so I think the fact that, I mean, a physics degree is in essence problem solving. And even though other, I mean, some of the lighting concepts that we have to use in coding our connection are, well, I mean, it is physically based. So I had to use physics thinking about that. But in terms of just sort of day to day, what I was doing, the fact that I've done a physics degree, I think means that um, I'm quite good at solving problems. Um, I enjoy it as well. And um, I mean, I found my degree quite hard quite a lot of the time, but it means that now I'm not sort of scared of hard work. And um, if I am finding something hard, I'm quite happy to just keep working away at it, try and approach a few different things and get it working. And I think I think the sort of my attitude to work is what phys my physics degree has given me the most, which is good. And then obviously also like in terms of practical tools, I, if I hadn't done coding before, I think this would be borderline impossible. <laughs> but um yeah, it's yeah. I think my degree has helped. Now that the Blender connection is nearly finished and it's almost released, can you tell us what you will be working on next? Um, so it's actually a bit of a secret, but I can I can tell you that it's very exciting, and I think a lot yeah. of our um, users will be very interested in this. Um, it's a brand new connection. I'm going to be do yeah doing another brand new connection. <laughs> that sounds very exciting, Lexi. Thank you very much for the interview and for answering all of the questions. And so we look can. forward to hearing more about the new exciting connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you.